Hey everyone, it's Alexi Uzas from Exile Entertainment. In this video, I'm going to give you five ways that you can cast big name actors in your indie film. Before I get started, I want to let you know that spots are available for our accelerator program that helps filmmakers like you finance and produce your own film. So if you're interested in learning more about that program, or if you'd like to explore working with us, then stick around until the end of this video. And for the best filmmaking advice, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post a video. Okay, so my first strategy is to finance your film completely, so fully finance it without that actor attached. Then once the film is fully financed, pitch the project to the actor's agent, telling them that the film is fully financed and that your dates are locked. Negotiate a rate with that agent and then take the film to market and cover the actor's fee through the marketplace. By the marketplace, I mean distributors and sales agents. So what you're doing is you're essentially financing the film without the need to have an A-list actor attached. I know that's easier said than done, but this is one of the strategies. So you finance it fully, then you attach the actor or you begin negotiations with the actor's agent you find out what the fee is going to be or you get a rough idea of what it will be. Then you take the film out to distributors and sales agents and try and lock in a deal. And through the advance that the sales agent or the distributor is going to pay to you, that will cover the actor's fee. So that's my first strategy for how you can attach a big name actor. My second strategy is to think outside the box avoid the typical industry protocols and start to get creative in the ways that you can approach an actor, engage an actor in the project and ultimately cast them. So the example that I wanna give for this strategy is the King's speech. So it, it said that the UK theater producer of the, um, originally it was a theater project, the King's speech, and the producer of that project wanted to get the script in front of Jeffrey Rush. So they contacted a friend in Australia to ask if they knew the, uh, the actor's agent. And the person in Australia actually said that they lived in the same neighborhood as Jeffrey Rush. So rather than going through the agent, what they did is they um, delivered the script in a brown paper bag to Jeffrey Rush's residence in Australia, in Melbourne. Apparently it was sitting on his doorstep and he took it in. And of course the rest is history. And so I wanted to give you this example because sometimes you do have to think outside of the box a bit when it comes to casting uh, actors in a project. You know, it is very hard to get through agents. It's hard to um, abide by the typical protocols when you're making an indie film, when you're an independent filmmaker. So thinking outside the box and getting creative is my second strategy. My third strategy is to attach an actor who is past their prime, but who in their prime was an extremely well-known and internationally recognizable and loved actor. So two great examples of this are Mickey Rourke in The Wrestler and John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. So these were two brilliant casting moves and especially in the case of The Wrestler, but I mean likely in the case of both of those films, those two actors were well past their prime and attaching those actors was a really brilliant move when it came to casting. Uh, it likely meant that they were actually able to cast those actors without too much issue. And of course, those actors are extremely talented um, actors. The performances they gave in both of those films um, are some of the greatest and most memorable performances of all time. And of course, those films, um, while we obviously, you know, looking back at them now, they seem like kind of big films, but at the time, they were both indie independent films. This is one really good way of attaching a big name actor to your indie film that's gonna be able to bring in 
um, some money up front from distributors and sales agents, even if it's a small amount. Uh, but ultimately, it's going to guarantee you a really great performance and it's going to help your film shine uh, and hopefully perform really well once it's released. So that's my third strategy. My fourth strategy is to attach a big name actor who is not based in the US. So the reason to do this is that US agents and managers are notoriously difficult to, uh, to get through to kind of even get them to open an email or to respond to. But if you can find a really talented actor outside of the US who is, again, internationally recognizable, who has some clout, then a way around going through the US agents is to then go through the agents or managers that that actor has in their home country or outside of the US. So this is a really good way to try and get the project in front of that big name actor. Obviously, it's still going to end up having to go through the US agent at some point. But what you're trying to do is get the project in front of the actor, get them and their team really interested in the project, get buying from them before it even gets to the US side. So that when ultimately you have to deal with the US side, you already have the actor and their team wanting to do the project. So this is a bit of a workaround and it's really just because uh, it is more difficult to deal with agents and managers in the US. So finding an actor that is big outside of the US and going through their management team, the agency outside of the US is a, is a bit of a workaround that you can use. My fifth and final strategy is to actually just be relentless when it comes to attaching uh, cast and contacting agents and trying to get the project in front of them. So what I highly recommend that you do when you're trying to attach a big name actor is to basically put together a list, kind of wish list of all the actors that you'd want to work on your indie film, say around 20, even 30 actors for each role, then prioritize them from one to 30, and then just start working down the list, contacting their agents and being relentless in your follow-up to them until you get an answer and give yourself a time period for each actor. So what you don't wanna do is work through that list but allow you know each agent a month or two months just to respond and maybe they don't even respond so then you've wasted a month or two. Instead, you wanna give each person a time limit. You wanna say that you need an answer by a certain date. You wanna be relentless in your follow-ups. If they don't answer, you simply move on to the next person. If they do answer again, you need to make sure that you're always using time limits to make sure that, that, that you're getting progress and you're not getting stalled in this phase of trying to cast the film. And of course that relates to financing. So you don't wanna get stuck here. You basically wanna move down that list as quickly as you can until you get a yes. So that's my fifth and final strategy. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave some comments in the comments section below and let me know some of the strategies that you've used in casting big name actors in your indie film. And if you're interested in working with us to help cast your film or finance your film, produce your film or even distribute your film, then head to the link in the description below. You'll be taken to a page where you can learn more about how we work and you can set up a time to speak with me or a member of my team about working with us at Exile. And check out these videos next on how to up your filmmaking game.